As much as we would like to have a crystal ball with forecasting snowfall many days in advance, unfortunately it doesn't work that way. We need to use probabilities and statistics in order to communicate a snowfall forecast many days in advance. So I did a lot of research on this in college. I had a thesis that I produced for my honors college that was based on the best ways to communicate winter weather with uncertainty driven and probabilistic forecasts. So we'll dive into what probabilistic information is. Uh, it can be used with those percentages that we see a lot of times with uh, chances of thunderstorms or precipitation in the summertime. We'll, you can also say that there's a 15% chance we could see more than 10 inches of snow. That's a, called a threshold probability, saying the amount, the percentage chance that you could see more than a certain amount. And then another example, 20% chance that temperature is less than 32 degrees. Those are all examples of probabilistic forecast. Instead of just saying a deterministic forecast where the temperature will be 55 degrees or there will be 10.5 inches of snow. So from past social science research, it's been found that people display a greater understanding of forecast information when they're given probabilistic forecasts instead of those deterministic ones. And the probabilistic information is most effectively displayed with numbers, like we see 20%, 15%, 50%, as well as uh, using those threshold probabilities instead of just having categorical expressions like likely or something like that because people can interpret that uh, very differently. So what I did with my research project throughout my college years as well as with the National Weather Service in Bismarck, I worked with them through a program with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration called the Holling Scholarship. I gathered a bunch of different graphics that weather service offices use to communicate winter storms. I organized those graphics used a bunch of analytics uh, with social media to study those graphics and storms. And the major part of my research was receiving feedback through surveys and focus groups. I did a survey with the United States public where I sent out the survey asking questions about winter weather graphics and I got over 800 responses. And I also surveyed meteorologists and non-meteorologists at weather service offices. So I, what I did is I put these survey respondents through different scenarios. Different scenarios where they were given graphics that actual National Weather Service offices used to communicate winter storms several days into the future. And what I found was that there's specific graphics that are best used at specific lead times before a winter storm. So when we're at that longer lead time, three to seven days before a winter storm, we can use certain graphics. And as we get closer, there's better graphics that are more suited to communicating probabilistic information and giving you the best information possible at that lead time. So in the longer range, I found that map-based graphics are most effective effective with communicating what the potential is like for snowfall. And we here at KFYR use these map-based graphics to communicate the possibility of a winter storm up to a week in advance. Now once we get a little bit closer, there's these uh, pr uh, probability graphics called risk probability graphics or probability of exceedance graphics. It's what those graphics you see called there's a chance of more than eight inches of snow, the, the probability of more than eight inches of snow, for example. And what is happening here is it's on an ensemble. We described those ensemble forecast models last week where you're slightly tweaking the initial conditions, running the model a certain number of times and getting a wide distribution. We take that uh, ensemble forecast, plot it on a map by saying each location has a certain percent chance of exceeding a certain snow uh, amount. So we can see that with a couple of different shades that we produce here at Your News Leader with the uh, blue, uh, orange, and red color schemes. That's just a little bit more of a simplistic view of these uh, threshold probability maps. So again, we're using probabilistic information at this lead time because we don't have the confidence yet to communicate the exact snowfall totals. And we want to display this information in the way that's easiest for you guys to understand. Once we're even at that closer lead time, when we're communicating it as a deterministic forecast with snowfall maps, we can still incorporate some uncertainty information by circling areas where there's a tight gradient of snowfall amounts. And my research came back to show that if you lived in this circled area of uncertainty, many people that responded to the survey would check back for forecast updates to see if anything had changed and prepare for higher snowfall amounts. And we've done this before. This was a snowfall map from the April blizzard where we circled an area of uncertainty where there was a somewhat tight gradient of snowfall amounts. 
And there was an example from the Weather Service in Omaha where the forecast changed from 4 to 6 inches to 8 to 12 inches. But in that first forecast map, the 4 to 6 inch range was in a circled area of uncertainty. So the uh, people that responded to the survey were able to anticipate that increase in snowfall amounts based on that additional piece of information circling that area of greatest uncertainty. So let's step through how we communicated this winter storm that is currently ongoing. Four to seven days before the storm, we used those longer range probabilistic maps, what are called impactful snowfall potential, these probability of seeing at least two and a half inches of snow or sleet equivalent, the, uh, the liquid equivalent, 2.25 uh, uh, inches, which is usually about three inches of snow. And these impactful snow graphics were a great way to communicate the uncertainty in the forecast with a probabilistic map. Then we got a little bit closer last Friday through this past Sunday, a few days before the storm, we were able to communicate the probability of exceedance maps, those six or eight inches more of snowfall, the chances of seeing that using probabilistic information still. And then once we got a little bit closer, one to two days before the storm, we were finally able to communicate the deterministic snowfall maps that everyone has been asking for. But it's a process, as I've shown you, and there are specific graphics that are really useful at specific lead times before a winter storm. And that probabilistic information is really, really valuable. We'll send it back to you, Jody and Kevin. Okay, so I just want to know, Jacob, how much more snow am I getting in my house? Yeah, <laughs> my personal forecast. Just kidding. That's great information. There's a lot to unpack there, yeah. right? But as yeah. meteorologists, that's exactly how we handle it. And uh, still, more snow on the way. <laughs>